Oh, my God. Well, Sam, it's been a while since we fished together. I'm excited about it. Young Sam Hayes here, who I'll be fishing with today on his home waters, is a third generation fishing guide and a product of what I've said many times is the most knowledgeable fishing family that I know of in all of Canada. At the tender age of 14, Sam's grandfather, Jim Hayes Sr., began guiding on the Clearwater Pipestone chain of lakes in Northwest Ontario. In 1938, he purchased a camp there and got into the lodge business full time. Little did Jim Hayes Sr. know at the time how the precedence he had set would impact his family for generations to come. I first met Jimmy Hayes Jr., who I might add also started guiding clients with his father at the age of 12 on Pipestone Lake in 1977. This was soon after purchasing his own lodge on the lake. At the time and over the coming years, I was just breaking into the wide open frontier of TV fishing. We filmed dozens of shows with Jimmy Jr. and his brothers Brad and Shane Hayes were always in the mix as well. Now, years later, young Sam's dad currently owns and operates Lost Island Lodge on magnificent Lac Sewell near Hudson, Ontario. Lost Island Lodge was started in 1991 by my uncle Jim Hayes, which is my dad's oldest brother. Fishing and hunting in the outdoors has been the way that the Hayes family has made their life, all their life. And Sam comes along, and I mean, since he's been able to talk, he's been immersed in it. I didn't, didn't receive no special treatment. I, didn't, I wasn't a, a typical boss's son, if you will. So I started from the bottom of the totem pole, and there isn't a job there I haven't done. And then now I am the, one of the full-time guides there and just waiting for, waiting for my spot at the top now. The entire Hayes clan still winters and calls the Clearwater Pipestone chain home. In fact, a number of years back, as a teenager, Sam guided me on the lake of his heritage. Good fish? Good fish. It was pretty exciting to come up here and fish with Babe, and at the time, to make it even more special. Yeah, it's a fat fish. That's a lot bigger than the big walleye. I caught my biggest walleye to date, while fishing with him. That's your biggest walleye of your life? The biggest walleye of my life. Oh, he was so happy and I was so happy for him. I'm not sure who was more excited, me or Babe. Yes. Ow, see, there you go, you hang around with the right crowd and good things happen. <laughs> so last fall, now even older, more experienced, and wiser in the ways of fishing and guiding, once again, I made the trip to fish with young Sam Hayes on Pipestone Lake. And welcome home, babe. A rundown Clearwater Lake ends with a unique portage that dates way back. First time I ever got to this portage, I took a look and I said, what in the heck is this now? It's a little railroad car that comes down on tracks and you drive your boat up onto it and it takes you up over and dumps you in the next lake. This is weird. It's the only place I know of on this chain that they have this. Day one, fall fishing conditions look perfect, and Sam and I just can't wait to get out and take advantage. Well, this time of the year, we're up here in mid-October, and just from years of experience, I know that there's two ways that work the best. One is a jig in a good-sized meadow, and the other one is a live bait rig in a good-sized meadow. I just flipped the cast up on top of the reef, Sam, and never even hit bottom. I love jigs. My favorite way to catch any fish that there is, is a jig. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's almost straight up and down where that fish came from. So uh, it's not uncommon for me to start with jigs. There, how you like this puppy? An adult. Our first adult of the day. And not a big adult, but a wonderful adult. In the fall, like anything else you want is big, as you can get it. Now I want the shank far back, so I'm just gonna double hook this big elephant minnow here. Once the lakes turn over in fall, it signals a period for the fish that now you better put the feed bag on. It's a solid three and a half inch minnow for these small jaws. So when you get into the fall period, you wanna use the biggest baits you can. Big baits mean big fish, but it truly applies in fall. Like anything else in the fall, think big, don't be scared to throw big elephant baits out. 
Here we've got fish right tight to the bottom. They might be walleyes. That could be a walleye there too. I've got a jig and a minnow on at the moment here. We're gonna go through these fish once or twice. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna go to a live bait rig. So here's another fish coming right there. I got a big lively minnow down there on the jig. You'd think they'd be just starving. This is fall. Got 50 degree water. Ooh, here comes several of them, Sam. Oh yeah. There's a whole school right here. I'm just gonna sit on them and yo-yo. Something has got to bite. There's one. Got a customer? Ooh. And that? Uh, probably. I'm going to guess walleye. Is it a little gold? Ho oh, ho! Yes, that's a walleye. Oh yeah! It had to be with the, with the number of fish that are down there on that screen. And he just boom! Isn't Look at that, that pretty? That is. See, that's one of the things that I love about this lake is the color of the walleyes. They're so, that came out pretty easy. So gold, so beautiful. And chunky, as a beautiful fish. Ooh. I love it when you set the hook and the drag goes. Do I have to come back up there? Yes, sir. I'm on my way. This is not as big. Oh, oh, big old smallmouth out there in the middle of all that. Hello, sweetheart. See, there's nothing better than the month of October. You can catch everything in October. And the nice things too about October is most guys are starting to head for the trees, you know? Oh yeah. The lake's quiet way down. There's no jet skis, there's no, no other fishermen out there. It's Boy, I thought the way that one first went thump, that was a walleye. It's almost ah. fun kind of guess, you know, after you hook them, is it a walleye, or is, it a, is it a big walleye, or is it a big bass? Mm-hmm. And they're all schooled up together. Which is kind of unusual, except in fall. Yeah. Everything's moving out to these reefs for the stock Well, they, they move out of all the bays and everything in the smallmouth winter real deep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, man. Somebody's gonna get bit, Sam. There we go. Big fish. Big fish? He came up and just crushed it. This is, uh, this is our walleye. I'm gonna bet it's a walleye. We do like have a tendency of finding big it, walleyes when we're together. It looks, yes, it looks like uh, the mark of old Clayface there, where the oh, way there she's he shaking is. her head. Big, real nice walleye. Um, Come on, baby. Sled. Whoa! You gonna nurse that thing all day, yeah. or you gonna actually? There we go. Bring that eight, nine, ten pounder up here and land him. There is an There's Ontario walleye. Whoa! Nice fish, Sam. Let's look at. Yes, we do have a tendency to find nice fish to, when together, eh? Oof, right there at the tip of her. Just like that, it's out of her, huh? Look at how thick it is, though. You know what I mean? From top to bottom and the width of the, the that's a big, heavy fish. Beautiful walleye. Mm-hmm. Nothing like pretty. Ontario in the fall. No. I mean, look around where we're at. You know, you talk about... Um, a sportsman's paradise. A sportsman's paradise, God's place, you know? Back you go, baby. I feel sorry for all the folks in the United States that have never taken the time to come up to Ontario. And we get to immerse ourselves mm -hmm. in this for a living. Got to be the luckiest guys in the world, you know? We are blessed, that is for sure. I've been doing this full time for 40 years and I still, I gotta pinch myself every mm -hmm. once in a while. You know, is this really happening? It's amazing. Ooh, there's a good walleye on the screen there. And I have nothing on the screen here. There he is. Yeah, oh, you got him. <laughs> it's a good walleye on the screen there, he says. Nice fish. 
Down he goes. This is uh, putting a bend in the in the croy, that's for sure. A little back reel action here. Ooh, big head shakes. Now, if it was anybody but you, Sam, or uh, your dad or your uncle, I'd be saying, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> yeah. But I have often said the Hayes family is the knows more about fishing and they're better fishermen than anybody else I've ever met from the country of Canada. And that's a quite a statement that is to a, make. I was just, well, that, is, that is quite the statement. Thank you. But I, I, I believe it in my heart and I know it to be true. Growing up, we, uh, I got to listen to all the stories oh, mama. from my, my dad and my uncles about, about fishing with Babe. What dark gold she is. You are just pretty. And making the shows and you know, all the ventures they had on Pipestone and Lac Sewell. Oh, this is a fish. Oh, that didn't move a whole lot. No, sir. I was a young, young, young kid. I don't know, I must have been three, four. Ooh, big old smallmouth, I nice think. Nice brownie, yeah. I had my mom help me. Well, she did the typing for beautiful. Ooh, yeah. Emails and letters that I sent to Babe. Perfect. Big walleyes and big smallmouth on the Come same on, spot. Beautiful fish. Yes. I started getting letters from Sam. He wanted to learn about fishing so much and sweetheart, huh? We've just been very, very close ever since. Developed into a pretty special relationship. Ooh, babe. Sam's turned into the model student of his uncle Jim and his dad Shane. It hit it like it was just, like it would have been a little guy. Who have been hardcore outdoorsmen all of their life like their father was. And Sam is the collective result of that. Beautiful. Wally again? This is a walleye. Big old marble eye. He's an unbelievable fisherman, unbelievable hunter, and he's just a young man of 23 yet. He's just coming into his prime now, so uh, if you ever get the chance to fish with him, I promise you'll never regret it. It's a big fat fish again. Doesn't get much better than this, that's for sure. Continuing now up at Pipestone Lake in northwestern Ontario with Sam Hayes, we awake to a major October cold front that's got us both wondering what that's going to do to the bite. The term cold front have any meaning in your vocabulary? It does in ours. Only we've now got a northeast wind, not a northwest wind, which is generally not a lot of fun. You see your breath a little bit. It's only dropped like 40 degrees since yesterday. Thundered and lightning like crazy last night. And it's our last day here. So we'll see. We started out, it was, you couldn't ask for any better weather. It, it was gorgeous and warm. And then all of a sudden, poof, we have this weather change and it got, got cold, it got windy. And, and usually so that's not good. You start with a jig or a rig? I got a rig. Yeah, me too. We were using live bait rigs with the super huge sucker minnows, or Mr. Chubby Lips, I like to call them. And we couldn't keep them off. Boom! Whatever oh, it is, I got just... one too. Pardon? I got a knife bite too. Oh, doubled up. We are on them. Hello! He just ate it. Nice smallmouth. Beautiful. Bye bye. That's a very good sign. Just like that, bang bang. Usually a guy thinks, well, the cold front comes through in summer and you know and, and knocks the fish off. But that is not necessarily the case in fall. Oh, there's a customer. You want a little second there with it? No. Oh, hello, Mr. Smallmouth. Most of the fish were holding Up fairly close to the bottom and weren't aggressive. Woo! And we tried different lengths of live bait rig snells anywhere from two and a half feet on up to as, as much as about seven feet. Nice fall, smallmouth. But with as light as the fish were hitting and as close as they were to the bottom. Booyah! 
It didn't take us too long to figure out that about a two or two and a half foot snell. Ooh, that's better here. fish. Is that a little better uh, brownie there? Yeah. Um, was the best way to go about a live bait rig. <laughs> that's a toad. Yeah. That's, uh, we're getting a little better class of these moths. They weren't very aggressive most of the time, and, and that's where, man, our, our legend extremes made all the difference in the world. I swear to God, if a fish swims by, and if they would just barely grab the minnow and, and lightly, you could feel it so well on the St. Croix. It's really a tool that does make a lot of difference. I have so many memories from here. It's a wonderful place. It was such a joy to revisit my old stomping grounds and fish again at Pipestone with Sam Hayes, who spent about half of his life growing up there. The other half, he spent learning the ways of a fishing guide at Lost Island Lodge on breathtaking Lac Sewell. So if you'd like to get a chance to fish with him for yourself and enjoy a fantastic stay at a classic family-run resort, I can't recommend getting a hold of them more. Lac Sewell is one of Ontario's walleye gems, and you'll also find fantastic fishing for smallmouth bass, northern pike, muskies, and more. Mr. Sam Hayes, all that's left for you is to take over the family reins one of these days and own an Ontario lodge for yourself. Not only do I know that it'll happen probably very soon, but I have no doubt that both the facility and the incoming guests will find themselves in some very capable hands to share the ultimate Ontario experience. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching today. And until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.